Today we're going to be talking about skincare from space. Yes, you heard that correctly. The Levy Sciences recently launched a product called the Ionia Age Defying Serum and on the bottle it says with space technology. So when I saw this I was both intrigued and skeptical. I wanted to know what is meant by space technology. So looking at the description of this product on the Delavy Sciences website, their star ingredient is Bacillus lysate, and they claim that this is the first biological cosmetic to be recognized as space certified technology trademark by the Space Foundation. And so as far as what this product does, they say that it significantly reduces UVA induced radical oxygen species levels activates DNA repair enzymes, and stimulates hyaluronic acid production. And so after reading these claims, I became even more intrigued with this product, but I wanted to see the evidence. So as a scientist, I always want to see the data to back up the claims. However, it proved to be quite difficult to find data on this bacillus lysate because that term is not very searchable, and I'll explain this further. But basically, I'm going to be in this video explaining to you what have I found after doing sort of a deep dive into this ingredient. So first, let's break those terms down. So bacillus, this is actually a genus of bacteria. There are actually over 260 named bacillus species, and lysate um, basically would encompass an extract. So proteins, lipids, etc. Um, the extract from the microorganism. I still had so many questions about this bacillus lysate. One, what strain of bacillus is this? Two, why does it being exposed to space conditions change the properties of this uh, lysate? And so after doing some deep digging, I did find the patent and I will link the patent down below for you if you're interested in looking at it in detail. So the patent is under Kyle Landry's name and he is the president of DeLavey Sciences. So looking at the patent on the Bacillus lysate, I found that it is the strain Bacillus pumilus. So you might be asking, why was this microorganism uh, exposed to space conditions? Why was this initially studied? It actually initially was not um, in relation to a cosmetic project at all. Initially, the motivation behind this was planetary protection. So when sending the rovers to Mars to collect samples, they wanted to make sure they were not introducing microorganisms from Earth into the soil of Mars. They also wanted to make sure that they were not um, contaminating their samples that they were bringing back from Mars to analyze. And they actually found that this particular strain of bacillus, when exposed to space conditions, had enhanced UV protective properties compared to the wild type strain or compared to the strain that had only been exposed to earth conditions. So looking at the paper referenced in the patent from the American Society for Microbiology, during their standard decontamination protocols, which involved decontamination by UV radiation, they found that this one strain of bacteria, Bacillus pumilus, had enhanced UV resistance after being exposed to the conditions of space. I'll have that paper linked below for you if you're interested in the science behind that, but it's a very interesting paper. And so this research took place on the International Space Station, and now it is used in this product so in the patent, they talk a lot about envisioning using this bacillus lysate in sunscreen formulations, which I think is very exciting. They actually show this bacillus lysate compared to um, a current FDA approved chemical sunscreen filter, oxybenzone. And I actually found that the bacillus lysate has enhanced UV absorption compared to octybenzone. And so this is really exciting about the prospect of this ingredient having enhanced UV protective properties when used in skincare, um, sunscreen formulas. And I'm so excited to see in the future if the FDA will approve this as a sunscreen filter. So the FDA does regulate sunscreen filters and there are only a few approved sunscreen filters in the US currently. I also think it's really exciting because of some of the limitations of sunscreens currently. So for chemical sunscreens, such as the one that they uh, tested against their lysate, the octibenzone, that actually has been shown to be damaging to coral reefs. 
Um, also, um, for some people, they find that the chemical sunscreen filters can be a bit irritating for their skin if they have sensitive skin. And then the physical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens made of zinc oxide often leave a white cast. So in my view, if this were approved in the future by the FDA as a sunscreen filter, I think that could really bridge um, a major gap. So looking at their website further, I saw that David Sinclair is a co-founder of this brand. David Sinclair is a PhD biologist. He's a specifically a geneticist. So he's a professor at Harvard University, and his research focuses on the molecular mechanisms of aging. So why we age and unraveling the molecular mechanisms behind aging. And so he has a podcast called Lifespan that I will link below for you if you're interested in learning about his research more. So initially, the only data I had to go off of was what they had available on the DeLavey Sciences website. And I did notice that they measured um, activation of sirtuins. And so that is a major area of research that David Sinclair has contributed to. The sirtuins are genes that David Sinclair calls longevity genes. So they're involved in many molecular mechanisms that impact longevity and aging. So sirtuins are NAD plus dependent deacetylases and they're involved in many metabolic processes including release of insulin, mobilization of lipids, response to stress, circadian clocks, just to name a few. So I'll have David Sinclair's podcast below if you are interested in diving deeper into this. So interestingly, they found that the bacillus lysate actually activates a sirtuin gene, SIRT1, and it does so in a similar manner to resveratrol. Resveratrol is a compound that has been shown in the past to activate sirtuins. And this data came from David Sinclair's lab in regards to resveratrol. Resveratrol is a natural compound found in grapes and red wine. But I found that very exciting and interesting that the bacillus lysate activates the SIRT1 gene. It does so in a similar manner to resveratrol. I'll link below the podcast where David Sinclair talks about this, but in one podcast he compared resveratrol to exercise for the skin. So in addition to the enhanced UV absorption and the activation of SIRT1, they also found that the bacillus lysate increased hyaluronic acid levels in tissue culture by 238%. So I know the question you probably have now is about the price and is it worth it? So this product is $125. So it's definitely a high-end skincare product, a more expensive skincare product. And as far as, is it worth it? My goal with making this video and with making future videos about this product is to provide you with information to help you determine whether it's worth it for you or not. So for me personally, I'm very interested in this product. I decided to purchase it myself and it is currently en route to me. And so I will be posting a review showing my initial impressions and so because of their experiments with hyaluronic acid that i mentioned the immediate increase in hyaluronic acid i should definitely be able to see just after one use um, an improvement in uh, skin moisture retention so i will be posting my initial thoughts and then also updating you as i use the product over time um, but I would just want to say that I will never tell you that you need to spend $125 on a product in order to achieve optimal skincare. So if you are watching this video and you are thinking there's no way I would ever spend $125 on a skincare product, what should I do? I completely understand. I will tell you that backed by science, sunscreen and retinoids are the most science backed skincare ingredients that you can use. So definitely sunscreen is a no-brainer. Protect yourself, protect your skin from UV radiation. And two, retinoids. So tretinoin is retinoic acid. You have to have a prescription from a dermatologist to get that. However, I have seen the evidence in the patent for the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair, which is a retinol. Your skin has to transform retinol with a couple of steps to retinoic acid, but I have seen the data for the Neutrogena patent in which they show that their retinol 
activates the crowd p2 gene which is the receptor for retinoic acid um, so what you would get as a prescription from a dermatologist tretinoin and to that point that is actually one thing that i would like to see with this product how does this compare to retinoic acid that being said i am personally very interested in this and very excited about it so if you are interested in seeing my review for this product my initial impressions and using it over time um, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post those reviews. If you made it this far in the video, please leave me a space emoji in the comments, so a star, a spaceship, or whatever space emoji you would like, and let me know your thoughts on this product. And also, if you have any questions that you would like me to address in future videos about this product, I can't wait for my order to arrive in the mail. It is a couple of days away, so be on the lookout for a video of my first impressions very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.